Oh, we're still here, and they are just behaving in a more and more magnificently adorable fashion the longer we sit here. They've come up onto this rock to have a little bit of a drink of water. There's a puddle in here, perfectly framed with green vegetation, and the lions are now playing with each other, with each other's tails, with their mother's tails. They're having a little bit of a suckle here and there. One or two have had a small swim, and the mothers, ever patient, are sitting on the rock wondering how it is that their youth has come to this rather, shall we say, stressful time of looking after nine gorgeous little cubs. <laughs> uh, it, it really is difficult to know where to look. I cannot believe how lucky we've been. Thank you to Brent, of course, for suggesting we come down here. Just wonderful stuff. So their story will be difficult and interesting to un... or oh, not difficult, but it'll be interesting to watch unfold. Because we made quite a meal of the fact, I think, that when the migration is not here, these lions struggle. That there is some dearth of things for them to eat when the migration has disappeared. I personally am not sure that that's true. I think that there's a, not, a lot left here. But if ever there was going to be a way to find out if the lion struggled without them... <laughs> Look at that mother there. That's a young male, you can see. If ever there was a way to find out how much these lions do struggle in the absence of the big migration herds, well, this is going to be that opportunity because to raise all nine of this lot is going to be no mean feat at all. What have we got there, Ferg? Oh, a carcass, yes. As Fergus is pointing out, they seem to be killing fairly successfully. And what is that, do you think? A boof? So that's a buffalo. And it's not a, it's certainly not a, a migrating animal, so they're obviously killing and around here. Now, silly cow, I'm not being facetious or nasty, everybody, that is the name that somebody has given themselves on Twitter. We want to know if the cubs will have a closer bond, having been born around the same time. Absolutely they will. And they will share a huge, they will share all their life experiences together, and that will absolutely make them closer. And certainly the males in this group, you know, of the nine cubs, there are probably potentially four males, four or five males, maybe even more, they'll almost certainly leave the pride when they do leave as a coalition, if they all survive, of course, to the point that they do leave, which will be at about three years or so and the females will remain in the same pride, and I'm sure that they will have a closer bond as a result of the fact that they were born at such a similar time. No, I mean, this is just too frighteningly wonderful. His mum giving a little bit of discipline there, along with licks, a number of bites. I mean, those teeth are, are terrifying. We were watching the two lionesses before you came to see these little cubs, and they were just being so affectionate with each other and it's so impossible to imagine when you see them behaving in such a sort of house catish manner that they could be these terrifying killers but that changes in a second when you hear them growl or you see them open their mouths That one there, and I don't think you should look at anything else. The other line is he's lying on the rocks, got three or four cubs jumping on her. I mean, it really is. It's very special. This tail being played with. There's definitely going to be trouble here. Yeah, Rita, you say the lioness looks exhausted. I, I often think they do, but you know, I often think that that's our human perspective being put onto them. I'm sure they do get tired having all these cubs around, but remember, they're unable to show any facial expression other than anger when they lift their or snarl or when they put their ears back. So when they're just sitting but normally with their mouths closed and their ears forward, we don't know if they're tired or uh, hungry or sad or what they are. But I think that the thought 
of, we know how difficult one human child is to uh, sort of raise. Uh, the thought of nine is just almost impossible to contemplate, and I think that makes it almost tiring to watch nine youngsters being raised by just two mums. Certainly, I, I have two nephews, and they <laughs> they have given their parents more than uh, you know more than their own their fair share of sleepless nights. I can just imagine my brother and sister-in-law trying to raise nine Jack and Williams and it would be an absolute nightmare. Look at the sun coming out on them now. They're talking all the time. Oh. seriously lucky people and the little squeaks and squeals now I believe that Hosanna is uh, behaving in a manner very patient of course but I would have thought that given the heat of the day and the uh, well I'm sure he's quite hungry and the prey that he's going for that he would have done it by now. Well, let's go and find if he does manage to do it now.